that we may better understand the meaning of our flag, I will read the history of the flag. Heraldry is as old as the human race. The carrying of banners has been a custom among all people in all ages. These banners usually contain, contain some concept of the life or government <coughs> of those who fashion them. The evolution of the American flag marks the progression of the government of the American people. From the founding of Jamestown in Virginia in 1607 until 1775, the flag of England was the flag of the peoples of America. In 1775, the pine tree flag was adopted for all colonial vessels, and this was the banner carried by the Continental Forces in the Battle of Bunker Hill. The Southern Colonies from 1776 to 1777 used the snake flag. In the latter part of 1775, the Continental Congress appointed a committee to consider the question of a single flag for the 13 colonies. That committee recommended a design of 13 alternate stripes of red and white, with azure field in the upper corner bearing the red cross of St. George and the white cross of St. Andrew. John Paul Jones, the senior lieutenant of the flagship Alfred, hoisted this flag to the masthead on December 3, 1775. And one month later, it was raised over the headquarters of General Washington at Cambridge, Massachusetts, and complimented, as he wrote, to the United Colonies. This flag, called the Continental Colors and the Grand Union, was never carried in the field by Continental Land Forces but it was used by the Navy as its exclusive ensign and was the first American flag to receive a salute of honor, a salute of 11 guns from the Fort of Orange in the Dutch West India, Indies. In response to a general demand for a banner more representative of our country, the Congress on June 14, 1777, provided that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes of alternating red and white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white on a blue field, representing a new constellation. It is generally believed that in May or June of 1776, a committee consisting of George Washington Robert Morris and George Ross commits, commissioned Betsy Ross, a Philadelphia Quakeress, to make a flag from a rough design they left with her. It is said that she suggested that the star should have five points rather than six. This star and banner was first flown at Fort Stanley's, called Fort Schuyler at the time near the city of Rome, New York, on August 3, 1777. And it was under fire three days later at the Battle of Ariscone, August 6, 1777, during a British and Indian attack. The first official salute to the Stars and Stripes was given on February 14, 1778, by France on the French coast when the ranger, under command of John Paul Jones, was saluted by the French fleet. This flag, then carried by the ranger, was made by the young women of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, from stri stri strips of their best colored silk dresses and white wedding gown of 
a recent bride. It is said that this same ranger flag was flown by Joan's ship, the Bonhomme Richard, in a thrilling flight by moonlight upon the high seas with the British frigate Serapis. When the Serapis struck her colors, the immortal fame of John Paul Jones was ensured as the intrepid defender of the youthful republic. The original 13 stars and stripes represented the original 13 colonies. In 1795, two additional stars and stripes were added to represent admission to the Union of Vermont and Kentucky. Under this banner of 15 stars and stripes was fought the War of 1812. It was decided that flying over Fort McHenry on September 14, 1814, that inspired Francis Scott Key to write what was to become our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. The Congress on April 14, 1818, adopted a resolution that on and after July 4, 1818, the number of stripes should be 13, and that the blue field should carry one star for each of the 20 states in the Union, and that new stars should be added for each state thereafter admitted. Since 1818, there has been no change in the flag design, except that 28 new stars were added before July 4, 1912. And this flag of 48 stars flew over this nation for 47 years, until just before the Vietnam War. On July 4, 1959, a star was added for Alaska, our first non-connected state, and a year later, Hawaii, <clears throat> our island state added a 50th star to become our present flag. 50 stars and 13 stripes. It is accompanied by the POW MIA flag <coughs> to recognize the plight and demise of a special group of our armed services. Those who were prisoners of war or still remain missing in action. Please stand and salute our flag. As this emblem is first in our hearts as loyal Americans, so is it close to our altar as loyal elves. The gentle breezes with lingering caress kiss the folds of no flag which can compare with it in beauty. There is no such red and muddy rose and falling leaf or sparkling wine. No such blue in women's eye in ocean's depth or heaven's dome. And no such pageantry of clustering stars and streaming light in all the spectrum of the sea and sky. Please be seated. Our flag is at once a history, a declaration, and a prophecy. It represents the American nation as it was at its birth. It speaks for what it is today, and it holds the opportunity for the future to add other stars to the glorious constellation. The benevolent and protective order of Alex is the first and only fraternal body to require formal observance of Flag Day. In July of 1908, the Grand Lodge of this order at Dallas, Texas, then assembled, provided for the annual nationwide observance of Flag Day on the 14th of June in each year by making it mandatory upon each subordinate lodge the order. This unique distinction as the strongest promoter of flag day 
is most becoming to the order of elves. This order is distinctively American. Only American citizens are eligible to join them, and it has no foreign affiliates. It has linked its destiny with the destiny of our country and made this flag its symbol of self-dedication to God, to country, and to fellow men.